Hey everybody, Patrick from HDRGB here. Today I'm just making a video where I want to showcase how I hook up my retro consoles to a modern TV. This is going to be done with the highest video quality running SCART RGB and component depending on the console and you know what individual need for them are and also how many inputs I have in the back of the TV. So I hope this is helpful to show people that are either using RGB SCART or trying to get into you know upgrading to RGB SCART and they're really confused as to sort of which cables to use, how many of them they need because uh, it can be quite daunting with the, the plethora of cables available and so on and so forth. So if you're interested in this stick around to the very end if you can. I'll try not to make it too long I don't want to make a, a run on video here but there's a few points I want to touch at so uh, just to get this out of the way if you guys like this type of stuff uh, we modify retro video game consoles for RGB, HDMI, new inputs and I try to make videos uh, while we go through this and while I go through sort of this uh, video game journey so yeah stick around hope you like it uh, one last thing I'm gonna assume that these devices here in front of us are well known so if you don't know what it is um, I'll try to sort of explain it quickly but not in detail just so you can get the, the grasp of it and uh, we can move forward. But if there's something that you don't understand, just leave me a, a message down below and I'll try to get some discussion going where I can answer common questions. Uh, but anyways, let's get started. So the purpose of doing this is why? <laughs> to play games, right? Why else? To play retro consoles, retro games in the best video quality. Uh, when trying to hook it up to a modern TV, such as a LCD LED in this case this is a Sony 46 LED it's difficult to get modern connections uh, on retro systems and when you try to hook it up to the back you notice that the inputs in these TVs are what are they well they're all HDMI this TV in particular also has one composite connection and one component now I'm a big fan of component and I'm really glad this TV has it and I find that a lot of modern ones still have at least one uh, it's still relatively uncommon and it's disappearing and composite as well as not used so I will use the component on this but not the composite so to define my terms and what I meant when I said the best video quality I mean some sort of RGB signal with a progressive scan so no 240i or 480i we're looking at 240p, 480p here whenever possible and trying to get the nice vibrant RGB colors. So anyways, without further ado, this is how I have it hooked up. Your hookup might be different. I'd love to hear how you have it set up. Uh, this is one way of doing it and I just found it works for me. So when you hear an upscaler, I have an OSSC. You know, a cheap Chinese uh, one is good if that's all you can afford. I used one for a number of years and here and there I still do. Uh, a frame meister is you know the most expensive on the line and then I find for the for the price you can't beat the OSSC I mean this thing is just a marvel it, it takes everything it's it's my you know all-in-one like jack-in-the-box it can just hook up everything and how I do that is very easy you have one male scart so I try to label these uh, <laughs> a smart man once said that putting labels on things make your life easier and oh boy they do I find I don't have to scramble so much to figure out what's what so anyways mail to mail so RGB signal goes into the switch so not Nintendo switch but SCART switch and then right now in my Banbridge automatic SCART switcher I mean there's various ones you can even get manual ones 3, 5 so on and so forth um, I like this one it doesn't clutter up too much and it's I like the automatic feature so we got Dreamcast input Saturn input and we have the option to hook up another one I have it free right now but if there's a system that you guys would like to see maybe me uh, record some gameplay footage let me know I can do Saturn Dreamcast and this could be anything N64 it could be PlayStation 1 PlayStation 2 PC Engine if we got any PC Engine fans out there who knows whatever so yeah this is how I have uh, have the wires running to get it working it's simply just a matter of turning on the TV turning on the OSSC the display will come on and if we look 
this is just the the main page so we take the remote for the OSSC let me just put it down so you guys can see maybe like this hit one RGBS and there we go so this is uh, my Sega Saturn running yeah psychic uh, what was it psychic Tarumaru what's the name of that game guys man I have it but like I, I forget psychic ninja is that what it is let me know if I'm wrong and that's the Sega Saturn right there running in SCART RGB alternatively I can do component some of the other consoles I have here the Dreamcast like we said this is my Japanese version I have an American version actually right in here and I just switched them out um, why? Just because it's cool having two units. There we go. With a nice dust cover so it doesn't get dirty. Uh, I have, wow, I have a lot of Dreamcasts. And uh, since we do the region free BIOS on them, having two for many people is redundant. And I encourage, you know, for those that only have a single console to get that mod done. It's really helpful. But for me, you know, I just have these two and heck, man, they look cool. So I just interchange them. But. Yeah, that's that's my second one. Oh, for anyone that knows what that is, uh, kudos to you. I just got that actually. Anyways, moving on, N64 here, so I can use this as the third input for the the SCART switch. Uh, but I have it running in component in this case. And if you guys want to see a video on my component switch, I can make that in the future for you. So let me know. And then I have a Nintendo Wii, so actually funny enough, this Nintendo Wii, I've never played it. And that's not to say I haven't played the Wii. Uh, I have. I just haven't played this particular console. I bought it. Um, I cleaned it up. You know, I refurbished it a little bit. Got myself uh, a set of component cables for it. And just haven't really played it for component. I hooked it up, and yeah, that's, a, that's another example. Now, the Wii doesn't uh, output in SCART RGB, so I wouldn't use this for my SCART setup. But... You know, just to kind of give you an insight here at HDRGB, we're kind of working on a HDMI mod for it. So, let's see if we can uh, get that done. Uh, down below, there's actually another Sega Sports Dreamcast hiding, so I thought I would just show you that. So, yeah, pretty simple here. You can see all those consoles here. All they require is the OSSC. You need a SCART switch of some sort, unless you want to keep switching in and out here, which I hate doing. Uh, wear and tear and also just yeah it's just not not the way I want to hook it up uh, I don't really want to play my retro consoles if I got to hook them up every time I want them to be ready to go whenever I'm ready to go and I'm ready to game you know here and there and uh, spontaneously so if I want to play some King of Fighters for the Saturn I want to just plug it right away if I want to do that for the Dreamcast I will um, speaking of the Dreamcast let me show you how cool it is to kind of just get that going. So let's say I'm done playing Psychic Psychic Ninja Tarumaru. Is that, is that right? Okay. Let's say I'm done playing this. I want to play Dreamcast, right? So I have my Dreamcast hooked up already. So what do I do? Turn that on. And what happens? The SCART switch is so smart. It just switched. So it went from 1 to 2. So if I can show you again... The Dreamcast, I have to just set the, the clock on it. I haven't booted this one up in a while. Or maybe I should just solder a new battery in, but anyways. Let's see what happens if I turn it off, if I want to go back to the Saturn. Look at that. That's it, right? Pretty cool. So anyhow, I'm just going to stop the video here. I can go on and show you what I have in there. It's actually one of my favorite games. Maybe I'll just leave it as a surprise. I hope that this was informative, if you have questions let me know, and uh, I'm in the midst of actually capturing footage, so the Mighty Sega Dreamcast, uh, I've been using these two to capture videos, if you want to see them, take a look at the other videos I posted on my channel, it's mostly gameplay uh, footage of a bunch of games I own, if you want to see any of them, uh, I have a lot of Sega stuff, just hit me up down below, tell me what console, what game, and I'll try to play my best and post that, so anyways. If you like this video, please like it, share it with someone that you might uh, find it interesting. 
and consider subscribing if you can. That would really just let me know that people like this stuff and I'll continue to post it. Uh, I don't want to be one of those YouTubers there that posts videos and, you know, doesn't reach anyone that, that cares. Uh, the reason I make these is because I, I love this stuff and I, I hope that you all do too. So anyhow.